ladies and gentlemen this is um, video number uh, 15 of the uh, PLS series and um, um, the preceding videos um, uh, looked at uh, step 1 to 4 on assessing the um, uh, uh, structural model and uh, this video will uh, look at the final step which is looking at the Q square or the predictive relevance. Now there is a difference between uh, the predictive relevance and effect size. So basically what it means is as the effect size uh, deals with each um, contribution of the exogenous uh, variables on the endogenous variables, the predictive relevance will use the omitted uh, 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 data set, data or group of data, and it will simultaneously use um, a prediction method on, on the, um, trying to uh, predict the uh, predictive relevance for a certain endogenous construct based on the omitted data set of the uh, exogenous. So it is actually a very good way of looking at whether or not the data sets can actually uh, um, uh, work on its own when data or multiple integer numbers of omission distance uh, using a blindfolding procedure uh, can, can still have a strong predictive uh, value on the endogenous variable. Okay, so we are going to do the procedure using the same variable um, model, uh, the smartphone. Uh, so we're going to use the procedure called blindfolding. Uh, before that, we will have to uh, calculate the uh, the CV redundancy, which is the common variance redundancy for attitude. So again, we don't have to do it for intention, we just have to do it for attitude. Now, under the calculate blindfolding, please read uh, this section on what it means to have the uh, default between uh, choosing your omission distance. Uh, usually the omission distance that we use is the default 7 uh, because it says uh, suggested values are between 5 and 12. Uh, since a blindfolding procedure has to omit and predict every data point of the indicators is the measurement model of a certain latent variable it comprises of fine uh, blindfolding rounds. Yeah, so the goal of blindfolding procedure is to use all observation for prediction and thus not to delete entire observations per blindfolding. So it just takes uh, one at a time. And if you can see, there is a literature that you can link to, which will of course help you in your uh, writing later on uh, when you need certain references. Okay? Yeah. So. Please look at these resources. They are very, very good resources, especially uh, PLS books and uh, algorithms. But anyway, let me just show you what to do now. So we're keeping it uh, by default. It's essentially the same thing as we do for our effect size, but it's just that instead of using the smart PLS algorithm, we're just using the blindfolding procedure. And uh, when we calculate this, we have the construct cross-validated redundancy uh, measure, 0.3 for attitude, and we do the same thing as we did for the effect size, it's just that now it's the predictive relevance, so we use the Q-square included, 0.3, and we make sure that it's the same for all. And then, to calculate the Q-square excluded, we are going to do the same procedure as we did for the effect size. We're going to take out one at a time, do the blindfolding again, calculate, and we have 0 0.276 for ease of use. Observability, make sure to put back in the ease of use again. Observability, 
is 0 0.269. Then you have usefulness. And you can calculate once again. Keep everything consistent. Cross validated uh, redundancy is 0 0.234. Just put back that in just in case I forget. 0 0.234. And with this, we can also calculate the predictive relevance using the same formula. Uh, as you just want to make sure, yeah, Q squared included minus Q squared excluded, divide over 1 minus Q squared included. So, uh, Q squared included minus Q squared excluded, sorry, and divide over 1 minus Q squared included. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, your predictive relevance, which is, again, quite good in correspond to the uh, value of your F square, T value, and your standardized beta. The higher the standardized beta, the higher the T square, and the higher the Q square. So. This, ladies and gentlemen, is your final uh, direct relationship uh, table, which you can copy uh, into this. Let's just change the orientation. For page setup. From this point forward, and this will be table xxx, just give it a name, direct relationships for hypothesis testing. Ah, should have just kept it as landscape. Oh well. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you can now use this as your table. And uh, make sure to also include right at the bottom the notes for this table. And I'll show you where to put the notes for this because it's important to always put in the notes uh, in accordance to this. You can put it in your presentation. Keeping to the source. This may be a bit too big but you can always make it a little bit smaller. And there you have it. So, make sure you put in the note for the t-stats, which is the significance, the r-square, the effect size using Cohen, and as well as the predictive relevance to tell what is the uh, predictive relevance for each of uh, the uh, uh, exogenous variables. Okay, thank you for watching, and please watch the next uh, continuing uh, 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 videos. Thank you.
facts.